this video is more like a show and tell. The goal I had here was to recreate a piece of code from P5.js that simulates slime molds in GLSL. Part of this is I'm fairly familiar with P5.js and less so with GLSL, so I thought if I could take something and kind of morph it into a GLSL script that would work in Touch Designer, it would sort of get me learning more about that process. And basically here what you have is you have a number of particles that are moving and trying to sense previous particles movements like the trails of a slime mold. The code is available online via open processing. So if people are interested, I'll link to this, some information about the sort of the mechanics of that. And if you want to kind of have a more from scratch view in a just a P5.js coding environment, you can look at this slime molds fissarium tutorial, which will get you a lot of the way in just the P5 world. But for me, what I wanted to do was to take something that I kind of understand pretty well, which is like X, Y coordinates and arrays and trails and all that kind of stuff and actually implement it in a GLSL component. Because for me thinking, for whatever reason, I find it more challenging to think in sort of pixels than in X, Y coordinates and sort of mathematical things. So pixel math and GLSL math makes a bit less sense to me than the more traditional coding I'm used to. And this is really why I wanted to start challenging myself to kind of port things I knew how to do quite well to different environments like touch designer, which I am newer to. And I'm not going to go into how I wrote the GLSL. It's pretty simple in this component. We've got my compute shader and my pixel shaders. Um, I'm going to just show you how to run this component and I'll make it available online through my Patreon, which I'm just starting out. So subscribe. In terms of like what a slime mold actually looks like, they're super cool. Slime mold, it's a sort of um, gelatinous blob. It's a single cell, but it doesn't have neurons, it doesn't have a brain. And yet, if you put it in an environment in which there is a complex decision to make, for instance, which direction should you choose to find the best food source? Well, this blob is capable of uh, solving this problem relatively easily. And this thing is just literally a jelly making smart decisions. So my goal was to make a jelly that makes smart decisions. And this is a bit of the kind of, you know, the background of slime molds if you want to go onto Wikipedia and check them out. Anyway, for this little video, I want to show you how to utilize this slime mold component. I'm just going to close this for the time being. And it's kind of just this really simple thing we can add into a feedback loop once it's been built, which is really great. So I'm going to add a noise, which is going to be my starting positions. I'm going to add a feedback and connect that up and it should probably automatically connect. So it's looking for a feedback. And then I'm going to create a null, which I'll connect back onto the feedback. We can see that there's some movement here. It's manipulating those pixel positions based on the underlying GLSL. If we go in to view that as points, it's not maybe super clear, but we can see that there's movement here. And basically this is all we have to do to get those positions. I'm going to go and create a little geometry network. So I'm going to create a point. I'm going to do add. I'm going to link that into a convert. For add, I'm going to say add points. And on the convert, I'm going to say particles per point and link that into a geo. So this is essentially creating a single point that I can instance. You could do this with a circle or a sphere, um, but I really like working with points because I find them, you know, they're, they're very simple ways of visualizing networks and they're also pretty efficient in terms of rendering speed. I'm going to link the end of my chain, that null, in, and I'm just going to give it the R and G values. Um, no need to give it the B value because it's just 2D. And sometimes weird things happen if we give it that extra value. I'm going to add in a constant. And we can see that it's working. 
you know what, I'm actually going to add in a point spread so we actually have a bit more control over the scale of those points. Home the network and let's add a render, a camera. I'm going to do RGB key and a final null for my output, which I'll visualize here. Before we get into editing the component values, we're going to add a keyboard into that feedback to reset it. Now let's see what happens. Okay, so first up, let's switch that monochrome. Turn the offset to zero. And let's also make the noise 32-bit RGBA. So then we have noise that is going to be centered around minus one to one. We're going to turn down that point sprite, which I really turned up there, and we can start seeing some of those forms. In the camera, I'm going to actually change my render to 1280 by 1280, because I set this to be square, and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so now we have our sort of fissarium moving around, and we can now treat this like any feedback loop where we can manipulate things. We have this thing called sensor distance, so essentially we can manipulate how close particles are to each other before they sense that there's some kind of trail where they make a, um, a rotation based on that. So having a smaller sensor distance is going to basically create these more um, fine patterns versus if you have something that's a larger sensor distance, you're going to get this more general sort of movement of noise. The sensor angle is how much that moves. So let's try doing something big. And you can see that creates kind of like this noise system. And realistically, this will be between minus six and six. So you can manipulate that to create these different things. The step size should always be pretty small. And the rotation angle as well can create these different types of patterns. If I right click, we can reset that parameter. Something we can also do if we go inside the component, I should probably just create another input, is right now we have two inputs here. If we actually want to add in another image, that will control the network in some way. Let's try that. We can actually add in a secondary image that the particles will flock to. Let me just add a fit to make that nice and square. That's good. I'm going to do fit outside. Um, if you want to mix this between the two points, let's just add in something like a cross, make it real simple then you can have this Fisarium sort of controlled a bit more by, um, by user interaction, which can create some really interesting effects as well. Let's actually reset this to the defaults. So that looks pretty good and we can get these interesting patterns as we move around and we're kind of adding in this extra noise to the to the system itself. So I hope this is something people find kind of interesting and want to play around with. Um, it's something I've really enjoyed and I look forward to seeing what folks do with it.